Hi, welcome to another video from Chibi No Podcast. You got me, David the Smash Fan. Smash your tech guy. I'm Jeff Podium. What's up, guys? And we're here to talk about the one and only Demon Slayer, Mugen Train. So this movie came out about... Uh, let me just turn myself up just a little bit. Uh, this movie came out last week, uh, last Thursday, and we all got to go see it. And we just wanted to give our review on, on the movie to let you know uh, if it was good bad we're gonna have the first few minutes of non-spoilerish talk um and then the next the last part we're just gonna go full spoilers so if you just want to know our initial thoughts or just our general thoughts on it you can listen to the first part uh but if you want to know more in detail then just we'll put a time stamp so you can uh know when to stop so you don't get spoiled and then for the rest apart for the people that have seen it so Let's kind of start this off really quickly. So this movie is a continuation of the first season. So this is different than a lot of other anime movies like a Dragon Ball Z movie for the most part is that this is canonical. This is in the continuity within the show. And it starts off right where it left off where we had um, Tanjiro and Inosuke and Zenitsu uh, get on the train on their next mission. So that's basically They're where Nesco. it starts. Oh yeah, Nesco in the back. So that's where it starts and this is where they meet the... Um, and I forget, it's a Hashia, right? Yaporion? I forget the yeah, name. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah. go to meet him and it's... Um, my mind's blinking. Is it Sengoku? Yeah, well, yeah, Rainbow. he's... They find out that Rainbow. he was on the mission with them because of... Yeah. But that's, so, kind, of, but that's kind of where the story takes place. Um, and they're trying to, you know, trying to fight this... Uh, uh, take control of this demon or defeat this demon that's with these people that have been disappearing. That's kind of the basis of the movie. Um, so that's kind of the premise. And I wanted to pass this off to to Miles. So kind of tell us your initial thoughts on this on this movie, you know, without spoiling anything here. Because um, you haven't read the manga, right? No, right. I have not. So kind of give us your impression of this movie. Just, just going in there, just initial with no spoilers. Um... Well, I was really curious because hearing from like friends like you guys that told me that this is an entire arc done in a movie, I was really curious how they're going to kind of do that because I was kind of worried not knowing and going in if if it's going to feel like an actual arc, I guess. That's the best way I can put that. Um, I will say um, the pacing of the movie from beginning... It has a slow buildup, has a really good middle arc, and then the end is just insane. Um, but it's a roller coaster, so it's really slow, and you're doing the d -d 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 going up, right? And then you get to the middle, and you're like, oh, we're going to free fall, and then you have that huge climax of the fun, and then it ends. And all of that emotion and buildup and the execution of the end, I actually kind of felt exhausted at the end of the film. Where I actually felt like I sat through like a marathon of an arc. So I'll give them that. As a movie, it does a really good job of feeling like you watched an entire arc. So it had a beginning, middle, end. It had tons of build up. It had character growth like crazy. I won't get into much of that yet. Um, but uh, animation was topped here. Um, the plot was kind of like a generic, like. I wouldn't say the plot's like amazing or anything. It was just kind of like your typical, like we're going into a new arc in an anime and here's your new arc. You know, it, it wasn't anything like crazy on that. It was just more the events that happened were crazy. The plot wasn't so much crazy. It was the events that happened during lots of different parts of the show that were crazy and um, definitely kept me interested, kept me on my uh, top of my feet and um, that ending. I don't want to say too much. <laughs> Trying to be vague. Jepporan, right. how about you? I really like what Miles did say here, that it was like a roller coaster. Uh, I, d I do feel like, you know, at the very beginning, there's like, I agree with Miles, it's, you're building everything up, you get to the half of the movie and you think, okay, it's going up. Then you think it's done. I'm going to add something. You think it's going to be done, but there's also something else in here. If I were to analyze it just from the movie experience without actually having any, I guess, as much background on the story, I'll say, oh, it was unexpected turn events. Uh, but yeah, I was gonna say overall, I think the movie was a 
amazing. It was pretty good. It was really emotional as well. Um, and people that have not seen it should definitely check it out. Um, just to start, I think it's it's especially you don't get movies that have become a manga adaptation into an arc before. This is actually one of their first that I know of, uh, which is pretty awesome. So the fact that they were able to do that and gra- grab the attention of so many people and did a pretty good job in Japan and also in America. Of course, it didn't beat Mortal Kombat or maybe did Iron. I haven't followed that part. But, but the point that a lot of people have watched and have a lot of uh, recognition, I think that's pretty cool for people to check it out. Without yeah. spoilers. Yeah, this this movie, uh, to kind of give more context of how it did in the US, it, it barely got beat out by Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat came out on top, but this is also like Mortal Kombat is an established franchise has had a lot a lot more people in the US, just in the US, not saying worldwide, but in the US are we're waiting to see. And this is like counting like movie theater sales, it's counting like HBO, all that stuff. And so Demon Slayer was uh, was still a huge like international success. But it didn't play. Wasn't it like theaters. Wasn't it like twenty two million to nineteen million? It was like only three mil off or something. It was like really close. Yeah, it was something like that it was crazy. That's insane yeah. for an anime movie, especially in the US. And kind of to, to to go off with what you guys said like this movie was great like it it kind of it the animation is top notch the you think it's done but then it's not um i actually had two comments from the people that uh, actually that i know of that i didn't know watched anime um until just very fairly recently that they gave me two comments um that i'll add here that i didn't think about because i read the manga and maybe we miles, spoilers, right? yeah maybe miles didn't think about but one thing, this isn't spoilers, but one thing was the, the, uh, I guess the, not Nick, um, the time that Nesco is in the movie, she's not in the movie, mm. like a whole bunch and her participation while it is like valuable, is not like, yeah. but it's not like way huge. And so she gets a smaller, so that was a big, that was a complaint from some people that like, they, they love Nesco. And the fact that she's not in this movie that that much kind of turned them off a little bit. Um, the other one was, uh, I guess I call it, I don't, I guess I call it the twist, but it's not really a twist. But I guess the second um, climax of the movie, um, some people were kind of confused as to why that happened because it seemed kind of random. Um, I can see how somebody had that point of view. And in the yeah, and, yeah. and in the movie, it doesn't actually explain what happens like why that that certain event happened and and again what and we won't talk about what what's what's going to go on in that because i don't want to spoil miles on that but um those are like the two big things that i heard that i didn't think about actually honestly um but maybe those things we can talk about in, in just a little bit here um, those points of views i could see those as some like negatives i could see that for people i can see their point of view at least um you know what? Actually, I, I, when I said the roller coaster, like when you go up and then you go down, the ending, once you go down, you have that fun part and then there's like a twist. It's almost like you get like a loop on a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like that and yeah. then it stops. So I, I should have added to that. But, but I guess the question, I mean, I guess yeah. your thought is like, you go there like, where the heck did that come from? Like that was the thought process. He, the, this person has like, where did that come from? Like it was a cool thing. Wait, question. I, I do have a question. This, this, has this person seen the show? Yes. Before it's yes. Big, okay. I can still see where they're coming from. Question on that part. So obviously we're being vague here for the listeners, but on a couple of those things, um, like with Nesico and then the 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 big thing that happens anyway, uh, those things that the complaints that you heard are um, are they. Are they better executed in the manga? Like, is Nezuko in there more? Is that big event near the the uh, loop of the roller coaster I, explained or okay, I fit was, more? Uh, I will say this. Uh, I, I want to explain that actually a little bit more in detail. But, okay. uh, um, but it's better executed in the movie. Mm, in the sense that, in the sense that uh, of the actual like climax. Because if what you get in the manga is a lot shorter than what's in the movie a lot shorter so it's kind of fillerized yeah, but right, right. Right. It's, 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 I'm still that I, I would say instead of fillers i would say it's enhanced there you go that's good i, I would like say that it's enhanced. 
It's enhanced, okay. Uh, but we'll, we'll go over that in a, uh, in a little bit. So overall in this movie, like this movie was great. It's a great continuation and it's a great segue to get you into season two. Um, you, I, I say you do need to watch it because there's a lot of emotional things that happen that tie to what's going to happen at the beginning of season two. And so watch it because you can watch it in the movie theaters. I think in a few months it's going to be streaming and be available for purchase. So go do that. Um, I give this movie a solid nine and a half. It was really great. So Miles Japan, what do you guys give it before we go into a spoiler territory? Um, I'd probably give it an eight and a half. Um, my only negative really was because I'm looking at like rewatchability. Um, some of the how do I say this without going to spoilers. In the beginning, certain things happen to each character, and each character has um, their own kind of event or storyline going on. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be a little more vague. Uh, some of that was a little too slow and getting a little long, and it, so, some characters were executed amazing on some of the stories that they were going through, because each one kind of has a story that they go through, and others were just really pointless and dumb and even though they added some fun factor and whole you know what i'm getting at yeah. um it's just to rewatch those scenes it's kind of like oh feels like a drag but when it picks up into the paces which and, and it's really only a complaint for about 20 15 of the whole movie that's why i'm giving 8.5 because the rest was just a masterpiece to me um just some of the pacing in the beginning was just like oh my god come on but other than that yeah it's, i love the movie it's phenomenal Right, nice. Japurion. I'm going to say, based you guys said, I do think that this movie should be a, a 9.5 as well. I like everything in the story. I, I understand your complaint, Miles, on that particular part that you're referring to. That's also part of the story. But I think that particular part is the thing that yeah. can make it kind of fun, kind of make it a little bit on the lighter side. People did laugh when they watched that part, so... I think it, it was able to provide a little bit of happiness before the roller coaster turning events, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do think of that. I love the animation. I can probably say I, I do like it a lot. But my only complaint, and this is something that I guess I didn't mention too much, was the animation of the first villain when it goes into the second part of that particular <laughs> part. I can see Are you that. talking about the CGI? Can we add that? Yeah, CGI. Yeah, yeah, CGI. I can see yeah. that. That was one of my complaints okay, on that animation would be my... too. Yeah. See, I think, but overall, I do think like they were able to have an amazing animation on everything else. Just yeah. on that particular part, it could be a little bit more polished. Hopefully, once the Blu-ray or you know the other um, the streaming services release, or probably yeah, when the Blu-ray itself they will enhance it or fix it because that happens a lot with anime. But overall, I think it was a great movie. I wouldn't mind watching it again so many times. Um, question it, for you guys, actually. The roller coaster of emotions as well, too. As well. I have a question. Uh, um, mm -hmm. the, the CGI in these movies that they're doing nowadays, is that a way to get around drawings? Is it cheaper, less work? Do we know why there's been kind of a push towards 3D animation? Because I don't really hear anybody be like, oh my God, I love screen animation. A lot of times it's just like, eh, it's fine. I'll let it slide because that's usually the most common I hear. But do you guys know? I think that's, I, I don't know. I think that's I can tell you this. Oh, go ahead. No, I, I mean, from what I've seen, like, I, I don't know if it's cheaper. I mean, I think it would cost, uh, I think it would be, a, uh, honestly, a time consuming to get it to look right. Cause there are some movies, high budget movies I've done, and it's terrible in the anime, like just terrible. And some that are just anime ones, and they've done it great. Like it's so seamless. Like Evangelion, like their 3D CGI that they've done in their movies, are is fantastic. But then you have like some that I always refer to this one, like the movie Fireworks. That sucks. First of all, the story sucks, but that CGI was one of the worst <laughs> I've ever seen. Like this PS2 type of CGI. So. Yeah, I, I, I don't what? know. I think they're just trying to do something new because that's kind of like like I, I go back to Dragon Ball Super Broly because they talked about how they're trying to do something new that's never been done before, where they did like this CGI. I don't know exactly what was groundbreaking about it because it was just CGI and it looked like a, a PS3 video game of, of Budokan or 
or something like that. So I, I don't know. But Budokai? That's, yeah, yeah, that's my <laughs> Budokan. Budokai. So I don't know, uh, well, Puff, uh, J-Porn, if you have any, any more insights on that. Yeah, uh, the biggest thing for sure, like as you've probably seen, Miles, uh, a lot of animation has now become digital. In, even if you don't think it's digital, there is a lot of digital elements into it. Because one, wow. it's easier. Two, especially when you have to do hand drawn, if you make a mistake, you can you have well, to try everything again. Here's or my problem with it though. It's like mm -hmm. watching going back and watching like a like a late eighties or an early nineties sci-fi film. Like say Mortal Kombat, for example, like when uh Liu Kang's fighting a reptile and all of a sudden that reptile comes out of the statue and it's the cheesiest shit you've ever seen. And you have real life going on and then really tacky CGI and it's like two different worlds where it's a big it's, contrast. It's, yeah. I it's you. a big it's 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 very apparent, right? Or if like say like Alien 3 would be a great example, it's the CGI um Xenomorphs. It's very off putting because everything is so real because it's real sets and then you have this really cheesy cgi and it's just two different worlds and i think that david got the point like with something galian when they do their animation in the 3d it blends perfect and it doesn't necessarily feel two different worlds it feels blended in the cgi in this one with the train and some of the animation stuff that happens at cgi it's very off-putting and that's that. Yeah. That's a good point on a complaint. I guess I didn't dock it on that because it was only small segments you see CGI. So again, it kind of comes to that argument I was saying before, where it didn't bug me because most of the like you know ninety eight percent of the film was not CGI. Right, and I think that that's what it comes to if it bugs you or not. Like for instance, another example that I can give you that you've probably seen. Uh, if you watch your name or when weathering with you, there is a lot of CGI in there. Sometimes it seems very seamless, and you say, oh yeah, I don't mind it, but you actually need pick and start paying real close attention. You'll see certain elements that like, I don't know, this makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But see, that's where it blends to the right. point where it feels natural, I, where this one was very off-putting. It was like somebody stuck like a CGI from right. the 90s with this beautiful 2021 animation. So yeah, that's where it's I, I don't know exactly the, the mirrors on in this particular movie, but, uh, like I said, it didn't bother me too much to make a big complaint, but if I were to nitpick, if uh, once again I'm doing that, I would probably say, yeah, this could be easily improved. But regardless of that, I'm okay with that, and I think you're gonna see a lot more C bad CGI as well. I'm not want to scare you in that particular sense, but I think that Japan is making a transition to bring all the elements into a digital media. Yeah, uh, it has happened with a lot of good series. It has happened with even Attack on Titan. Currently, a lot of people are complaining. Some people are happy. To be honest, I don't really mind it. And it will get to a point that if we allow them more time for them to develop, they can easily polish it. It will just take some time trying to keep up with that new technology that they have. Because switching from pen and paper to technology, I mean, there's a lot. There's a big curve as well. So I, I can definitely see that it may still happen. But I, I'm also hopeful that they're going to improve a lot more into the story and into the animation in the future as well. Yeah, we'll see. Well, let's uh, let's stop there for, for a minute and let's uh, let's go into some spoilers. So those of you who have not seen the movie, you can get off now. Those that have, let's start talking. I'm, I'm going to address actually the first thing that Miles was talking about, kind of uh, some differences in... The movie this is gonna we're gonna write to the ending so this is when they're fighting the actual upper deck. everyone dies everyone yeah, yeah. everyone this, this is attack on time uh, <laughs> i forget his name is uh uh Japan is i i want to say it's as and new or akaza akaza, no, akaza. akaza. The so here here's here's the cool thing and this is why i say this part was enhanced so in the in the manga when when he appears he appears and i think sigoku they talk a little bit and the, about him like becoming a demon and they change maybe one or two blows and then it cuts to something else in the manga and then the next chapter you see him already bloodied up like his eyes are already like hit in and he's all cut up like really yeah and so the only big it's thing really that you, short. the only big thing that you get is that final part that final blow but even then in the manga it's really short like that whole fight so is was way enhanced and, and like made so much better in the in the movie 
than reading it. So Akaza pretty much just defeats Rengoku pretty easily in the manga. It's implied that it's it's. Uh, it's I mean, it's you yes can no. see like a you don't see the fighting, fighting. yeah, but you don't it's not in detail, right? It's just very short. Even like the panels. That's what I was telling you, Miles. When it comes to the manga for uh, Demon Slayer, the anime is better. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a great example of how they able to enhance with the animation and the story and bring a little bit more and flesh out this whole story, which is amazing. So if you were to see in the manga, you will see like comic panels here and there. In some occasions, sometimes you get to see a little bit more. Um, but being able to have all of this plus the music that also enhances uh, that movie as well, it does. It's like a uh, power up for this movie, or a level up for this movie. I mean, I, I won't lie, when Akaza Pole showed up, and it was like, because he's like the third, he's top three, right? Top three, he's yeah. Top, top three, three demon. Three. Yeah, when he showed up, about shit my pants. I was like, what the <laughs> hell is this guy doing here? And then I know I the music was guys, pretty cool, too. That also enhanced the It fight. was good. So like when they were ready to fight, I was scared that Rengoku was gonna die just because of the fact that I know that what are what are these guys called? Hashiras or what are, what are they called? Hashiras, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm always I was really worried because I know that the top like those like top five, top whatever, they can they can kill them. Like like yeah, so I was really scared about Rengoku even like living. Um the emotion was really um uh, heightened in the theater. And obviously when the, the end came to him, which well, I think a lot of people predicted, I mean, there's actually a lot of people crying in the theater. You could hear a lot of people crying. It was, yeah. that hits you on the feels. And they, they did a really good job, I feel, where, I don't know how it was in the manga, but I mean, God, you have like 15 minutes to mourn in that damn thing. I mean, it was really, really done well for an emotion to a character that we knew nothing about in season one to get pretty much everything you need to know about him in a whole movie for such an impactful character like that. I mean, I was attached to him more than the main characters in this movie. They did a phenomenal job with his character. And the dream sequence was him, that's where I was kind of going earlier with the non-spoiler review is, you know, um, Inosuke and, you know, Zenitsu, the, 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 those things were kind of, there were dream sequences like, you know, Inosuke was funny, the other one, it just, it was kind of annoying, but like, with Rengoku, it was just really, really well done with like his parents and like his his brother, and they really get you emotionally attached to how hard he worked. And you know, Tanjiro is oh. really looking up to him. He's going to get trained by him. It's just it was a really impactful death. I was going to say with that, since we're talking about the dream sequence, Tanjiro's dream sequence is a part that got my wife really into it. Being able to see how much he's struggle how much he wishes he were to go back into that life you know there's a reason why people like Tanjiro and he is it's a very relatable character and being able to see all his struggles living his going back and living with his family being in a good environment and then breaking apart from that really got to my wife and she she cried during that part I'm like oh that's funny kind of interesting that she cried at this particular moment of course she also cried at the very end but I think in this movie, apart from giving an introduction to Rengoku, he was so we. I think the director was also trying to empathize, uh, like for us to empathize with each particular character. Well, all the big characters like Rengoku and Tanjiro for the most part, um, and that's the thing that really drove people to enjoy the movie a lot. You get to see where Rengoku's coming from. You get to see what Tanjiro is coming from. And something that I also did wanted to mention uh, to you, David, that your friend did not understand what was going on i found it kind of surprising because well that's the reason why the first demon attacked tanjir in the first place you know it, it actually explains and he actually saw the anime right so even in, if you were to watch the last episode of demon slayer you know that muhan is also look they're all looking for tanjir and that's the reason why he's going to be attacked to be so, fair, uh, this has been like, what, a year plus since the movie came out? I mean, I went in without watching it for true. a year plus, and I've forgotten a lot about stuff because there's been a lot of anime and a lot of things to focus on since then. So to be fair, I was I was having to ask my buddy, like, what was this again? What was this again? So maybe that's why. There, well, there's a, I guess there's another thing, too. It's like, again, 
in in the manga it just goes so seamless into the next part and it explains more mm -hmm. what's going on uh, and and to japorian's credit he, he's right like we know that muzan is, is searching for tanjiro he's searching for something he needs something done he, he, see i forgot all that and so, can you guys remind me um yeah he even told yeah. like all his upper demons the lower demons like if you see a guy with earrings you have to kill him basically so but the thing was so like, that's why that demon wanted to reach him so that's why but uh, him getting there is it doesn't it, i guess in in the anime it doesn't say that they're proactively looking for him. muzan at the end was just like if you run into him kill him so they he, I, I, at that point there wasn't anything like hey i'm sending you to the train or i'm sending you to this I, I have a scout that says they found this person so there's nothing like that that's explained in the in prior to this that explains why the upper demon finds Tanjiro in the place that he does. Like, it's all really convenient. Again, it's explained a little bit more. It's going to be explained more in the second season. A little, And it just makes more sense. It's not going to be a huge reveal. Jimmy. It's not going to be a huge spoiler of what happens. But it, it ties to what happened at the end. When Muzan just tells all his demons, Hey, we got to look out for this guy. And it just explains a little bit more of but what his orders were. It, it does mention when Emu, uh, like the, the first demon, sees Tanjiro and he sells the earrings. Mm -hmm. He got his attention a little bit more in the movie. So, I mean, if you were to pay close attention, I guess there are some hints. But yeah, I do agree with David that it doesn't actually explain you in detail. I don't know if, if it would be a good idea to have some kind of recap during the movie initially. I don't know. I think it's just being able to have it by itself. Well, it to be self. fair on that, actually, they, and I didn't watch them. They released, I think it was like three or four OVAs that did a retelling of season one, and I didn't watch them. They were like some specials. I don't think they were like full things, but they were doing some promotional episodes to recap you before yeah, there's the movie some came out. But I didn't watch yeah. them. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I just kind of shift gears on this one. Um, <laughs> I, I know you did the dream sequences were kind of like kind of mad but i did love some Inosuke's. of them, some I, of them. I love daniel's case i think that was the funniest thing you have of course he wants to be the leader and he wants to you know everyone's looking up to me he has everyone like these freaking like little chibi animal it characters. was the best comedy of the movie <laughs> let's be honest uh, yeah. it was the best comedy yeah and despite <laughs> how much i hate zenitsu and i do i don't like him everybody like hates him. him no that's not everyone i don't a third of people here don't like uh, like him but his he had funny oh. parts especially when they try to get to his spirit core or whatever and he's like you're you're is like um and you're not nesco and like tries to find so again he had some funny parts but again it's i, I don't like it that he has to be asleep still to like uh. fight like even in the like posters like when you see the post like you see him sleeping because that's the only time he's useful and it's only for a little bit but i digress that's a that's a personal opinion i know Japan will fight me on that one and that's fine <laughs> um Charlie, I mean I think from I think in this particular movie the ones that shine the most will be Tanjiro, Nosuke, and Rengoku. That's about it. Oh yeah. And those are the ones that Rengoku people... was the, the highlight, bro. Yeah, in Inosuke he's my favorite character of all the series. Who is? Uh, in Inosuke. He's my favorite. So being able to see him like being like the yeah, being him, it was like it was amazing. I, I will give credit I to think, the Nitsu, yes. though. I mean, his dream sequence with Nezuko and being in love with her was hilarious. I will give him that. That was funny. <laughs> like I said, I, I I'll give him that. It was I funny. I like about the dream se sequence. It provides a little <laughs> bit more of relief and comical enjoyment before the big fight happens. Yeah, and one of the things that I I also truly enjoyed was the... So at the end, when all the Hush are, are being told what happened to Zengoku, uh, Rengoku, it, that one was, uh, that was cool because you did see it in the, it's almost exactly the same in the manga, but it was really cool to see it animated and just kind of seeing like how they're taking it. Um, and like some of them are like surprised. Some of them are really like really upset. Some of them like, you know, uh, mad and others, you don't see emotion right now. And so that was just really cool just to see, just to see that. And um, just kind of setting everything, I mean, setting everything so that the, so that the uh, anime can continue. And it's going to, con hopefully they don't have a recap. Uh, okay, he, I guess I'm going to ask, do you think they're going to recap this a little bit before going into the second season? In the second so. season? Like a recap episode? 
maybe it won't be an episode maybe it could be an OVA uh, just could be like what they did for this you know they did three episodes for this as a recap so or season one yeah something like that but I think that's what's cool about Demon Slayer all of this story that you're able to see is the original story they just being adapted right away um and they ha- haven't added anything that i won't say adding they, they enhance certain elements of the story but they haven't had anything at the moment so i wouldn't be surprised if they just go ahead and continue with the story that's also a possibility and i think that I, I'll, I'll be okay with it as well uh but i going along with that though i did tell uh no that there has been a lot of people that have not seen the uh, the show and did watch the movie, uh, especially in Japan as well. I mean, come on! If in order to become the number one grossing movie, beating all of the Hayao Miyazaki films, to be the top movie at, at this very point, to be even be considered to be submitted into the Oscars, uh, um, there has been many people that have seen this movie without having any context. Maybe they read the manga because I, the manga in Japan is really big at this particular yeah. point. Um, but I'm also not surprised that people that have not read the story or nothing about it are able to watch it and enjoy it. Because if you think about it, I mean, if you remove certain elements that, of course, add to the story, you can still enjoy this movie uh, without having a full understanding of this. Of course, there will be some questioning parts here and there, but overall, I think everything else you get to know, like, say, if I never read Demon Slayer, I were to see be some random characters like trying to be funny trying to meet this random guy having to have some kind of dream sequence yeah it might be confusing but i still might be able to enjoy it of course it won't be as much as somebody who's who knows the whole story or who actually read uh, or watch the anime but I, I can still see that there has been enjoyment in people's uh, I don't know, life to see those characters come yeah I, I mean i don't know how how people in japan are in here but i guess the way i'm looking at it is like there's there's no character development towards the other established characters like Zenitsu and uh, Inosuke gets it right. He gets he gets more character development than all the other ones. But again, it's it's on the assumption that you know how he is, how he's always like gun ho, how he's always wanting to be a leader. So like the dream sequence, like uh, the dream sequence that both of them, like this, like the Nesco one, like in Zenitsu one, wouldn't make any sense because you have no idea who this guy is. Um, that's like my only thing. Like, again, you could like you could enjoy it, but I would I I guess if I were to watch it, I would just be more confused at as to what the heck's going on. Because like you said, oh, yeah. there's the whole thing with Muzan Definitely. that we know about the anime prior to that. And if you see all this happening with these demons, you're just like that just seems kinda convenient. Like how did this person just come out of nowhere? Um but like I said, if, if people are still enjoying it, then my hat's off to them. I want this movie to succeed a lot more. Like I want this to to make it so that people focus more on and understand like how great an anime can be you know i mean i've always wanted that with i mean we always wanted that with dragon ball but this one also more especially i want it because i there's a lot more people that are open to this and i would love to see it one day like where they're released like the same day that comes out in japan a movie you know a movie that we've all been waiting to go see or be hearing about an anime movie and just have it done because that'd be cool to me be, wasn't be Dragon Ball the closest we've had? Mm-hmm. What was that like? What was Broly? Was it a week or oh, it was uh, a month? That's a month. right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And that was the closest we've gotten. Mm-hmm. And because this came out what in October originally? This movie. It got delayed last a year? few times. About it was. Uh, so that's October sixteenth. I think it was June of last year. I I, I can definitely check it out, but but yeah, it's a, it's got, a good sorry, gap sorry, for, for us. Over. But I, I believe, but, but, yeah. but that has to do with what was happening in the world. Like I think it would have sure. come out a lot quicker had it not been. But I don't mean it, it wouldn't have been day of like you're saying you wish yeah, it would have. Yeah, though. It have. But that's my dream. That's but, what I'm. But think about this though. Even though there has been a lot of precautions and a lot of uh, measurements to not go to a movie theater as much to watch this movie, people in Japan were able to get this packed to watch this movie. And to spend an, a lot of money to be one of the most movies to watch in Japan. So, I mean, it tells you something right there that people were really intrigued in this. And even before that, I think the, the manga sales for this was so big that, man, 
it, it really puts like it even got to the point of beating One Piece in manga sense. Come on, and, and that tells you quite a lot about the story. So, but yes, uh, I did want to mention something as well. So I guess Miles step away. I think they, they will probably add a little more to this. What I like about this movie too is that it also hints of things that are going to happen in the future. And if you read the manga, if you read the story, you get to see those upcoming villains or upcoming, upcoming demons as well too. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. Even to people that already know about the story, but seeing a little sneak preview what's going to happen next, that is pretty cool. Um, I guess call it Easter egg per se, but yeah, it did deliver. Yep. So overall, uh, our opinion is please go watch this movie. This movie is great, and I truly enjoyed it. I'm I'm actually rewatching this. I'm watching it in in Spanish, which is interesting <laughs> to to say the least. But uh, but yeah, but go watch it. It's it's all good. Um, and let us know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. If you liked it if you didn't like it if there's other parts maybe that we didn't talk about that you liked maybe you did like the whole cgi on the train i don't know like, <laughs> that's something you did then that's up to you let us know so yep go ahead like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching this is david the smash fan monster tech guy and your and this is chibino podcast